My first project at Quora was to build the iPhone app. No one at the company knew iOS development. So one of the co-founders just asked me, like, why don't you learn Objective-C and then build the app for the next few months? Learning is what I joined for and I'm glad I got that. So did, did you actually build like the first Quora app, iPhone app? Did you build that? Yeah, I was the engineer on it. I worked with a designer and a product manager. When you guys first launched it, how many engineers were working on it by then? It was just me. On the at least wow. client side, it was just me. Hi everyone. Uh, welcome to the next episode of Tech Heroes. And today I have a really, really good friend of mine uh, with us who is currently an engineering manager at Facebook. And uh, he was actually my bachelor at Stanford, and uh, he joined Kura right after that. Uh, he's an, he did his bachelor's at IIT Roorkee, and we'll get to know a lot more about him and his journey. Uh, so let's welcome Neeraj. Uh, hi, Neeraj. Welcome to Coding Ninjas, and looking Thanks forward to hearing a lot more about uh, what all you have done and why you have done it. Right? Welcome. Hi. Thank you. Perfect. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, guys, as I said, Neeraj uh, started his sort of journey in computer science, I would say, uh, at IIT Roorkee. And uh, I actually figured out uh, recently that Neeraj actually started not in computer science, but actually in electronics. So, uh, how was that? Uh, like, I, like your first year was it electronics? Like, how did you decide that you want to switch to computer science? And what was the process like? Wow, uh, it's been a while. Um, let's see. So I chose electronics mostly out of choice. Um, I My rank of afforded me both electronics and computers. At that time, I didn't really have any personal interest per se. Karol and Bola engineering, karlo, IT, karlo to karli. But okay. after I went to IIT and started my first year, that's when I realized I would much rather do computer science or anything but electronics. Um, it was mostly personal choice. Like I found the coding algorithmic classes much more interesting. I found myself doing coding outside of classes and I could not understand anything about transistors. <laughs> so, oh, so this is, this is weird, I, right? That, that, is, that is very strange, right? Like, so you are saying, it was not exactly like a department change that happens, right? Like you actually had an option to take both and you decided to go with electronics. How did you decide that? that you so electronics and computer science are just different degrees. When you go through the, after you get the rank, you decide which course you want. I picked electronics. Why I picked electronics versus computer science, I didn't really have a good reasoning. Um, okay. I talked to a few folks and I got misguided by hearing that electronics is an evergreen field and you'll always get jobs there while computer science keeps changing. So you have to keep studying new computer languages every two years to be relevant in the field. So not knowing anything in that space, I just took that advice and I chose electronics. Wow, wow. that's very interesting because in my case, for example, yeah, in my case, for example, somebody told me that no difference in electronics or computer science. Loge. Finally, you don't have computer science. Mein hai. <laughs> Ab tum ki and you think that electronics and then you want computer science or you want to go directly to computer science. Mein jana jana. And I was like, yo, we <laughs> computer science. Hi le lete Achha. So, uh, so, was this switch to computer science uh, like a department change? Or was it like, did you have to be like one of the toppers in GPA to basically make that switch? Yeah, it was... Uh proper field change well technically it's in the same department per se but it is it goes through the same field change process and only the top few people based on gp in the first year get this opportunity so i had to work really hard in my first year so what was your gpa in first year uh i think i managed a 10 on 10 I managed on my first semester at least. For second, I may have missed on some. I forget exactly, to be honest. But I, I managed like, to get. If you, if you yeah. like, I think you are just uh, you just 
acting out that you don't remember that you scored 10 out of 10 like it's like if you had I, I don't remember my final gp in 4 years i remember my 4 year gp i also remember yeah. i was first in first year i don't remember the individual semesters anymore sure sure that's why 10 10 so years you, after, out of college you realize gpa does not matter anymore or did not matter anywhere so you no, i'm sure it mattered in getting you to stanford right like so i'm sure that's your gpa yeah, that's fine right so what was your final gpa 9.696 okay okay man okay great so uh wasn't so as hard what? as i've heard it in it delhi no man no uh, i think I, like it just depends right like uh, the kind of what exactly you are motivated towards i don't think i was motivated for a department change and i think like whatever you score in first year you sort of like stay around the same right you don't really like you very rare stories where you see people mm. going really up or going down really right so uh, okay seems like you sort of figured out that you like computer science you move to computer science department and then uh like how was your journey during the college were you doing competitive programming were you learning some sort of development what exactly were you doing along with college and like how how was that um to be honest i didn't do as much things outside or at least i didn't take it as seriously i had a few friends with whom i would just explore random games i remember one time you we building some Uh, I I don't think I can call it AI really, but at that time it felt like AI for tic tac toe, which was a very very exciting milestone. Teaching writing a C plus plus program for to get a computer to play tic tac against you and never lose. But I wasn't as into the programming as you know, doing top coder or coding chef every day. So it's okay. more of a side past time. Yeah, I'm sure you are. You are out of college for a long time, right? Like you, you just called code chef, coding chef. A lot of my students are going to just jump on that. They just don't know anything. They just code chef, coding chef. That's okay. That's okay. So perfect. So uh, and you did an internship at Google, right? So like, how was that process like? Uh, like yeah. Um, it went through the standard on campus interviews uh, google came for interviews at rodki well it was a phone interviews if i remember correctly they went through two rounds um, both of them were pretty standard coding questions i think you have to do two questions in each round if i remember correctly okay um, okay nothing too fancy like yeah so we had a very weird, weird So on the same time, right? Like at IIT Delhi, we had a very, very weird internship program at that time. So what used to happen mm-hmm. is, uh, everybody has to had to give a preference that what company they want to go to. Each company would tell how many people they want, and on basis of GPA, we were allotted interns. So companies were not allowed to actually take interviews. No interview process. They were not oh. allowed to do the interview process to avoid. students getting uh, like into the interview process and not studying uh, not focusing on college uh, during that time so it was a very very weird process honestly yeah so so i remember like all the top so basically gpa decided your yeah, internship internship yeah gpa has already decided the internship so everybody mm-hmm. like all the top rankers sort of went to google then i think the second sort of preference was maybe microsoft everybody around 8 to 8.5 gpa sort of went to yahoo and uh, netapp that's how like sort of uh, the gpa like the internship process was very very weird okay so i think rodki had some rodki had some sort of cut offs maybe uh, even if the campus did not the companies that were coming in had their own cut offs for considering for interviews but there was no other preference for gpas if i remember correctly yeah 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 makes sense makes sense Perfect. So, how did you? So, for example, personally, I decided to do a job first, and then sort of go for masters uh, because I wasn't personally sure if I want to be in tech. So, how did you decide that you want to do masters right away? And I think like you got a job at Microsoft. Then why did you not decide to work there for some time? Or like, like what was the thought process then? Like, why did you go for a masters right away? Sure. Yeah. Um, so, as you said, I got to Microsoft during the on campus. 
um, when I had applied for masters, to be honest, I wasn't sure if I wanted to go for it. It was I was still in both minds of do I want to stay in India, explore the tech job scene, or maybe even I saw half my friends preparing for MBAs. I was debating that as well. But I think I enjoyed tech enough that I decided at least I want to try sticking to tech for some time. And then the decision was mostly getting a job directly or continuing to study. And I was not sure even when I went through the master's application process, even when I had Microsoft job, I think I got sure once I got through Stanford that it was just key. This is once in a lifetime of opportunity. Microsoft has a job for it. I just do it. Um, hmm. The back of the mind, the other thing was I was also deciding if I want to do research PhD or not. And I was not ready to commit six years. So okay. MS felt like a smaller commitment. I can still do masters, take some research courses, work under a professor, and then decide if I want to commit for six years or join the industry. Okay. It's okay. a mix of those things. Okay. So your PhD was on the cards, right? Like, so that was still an option that you were uh, considering? Yeah. When I was doing my undergrad, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I even applied for a PhD in some places. Okay. Okay. Perfect. But I think after I came to Stanford, after my Facebook internship at Stanford, I decided PhD. I much rather prefer the industry experience than the academic experience. Hmm. Like just okay. shipping things, getting things out was so much more exciting and enthralling than working on a research problem with a professor which had its own perks as well, but I didn't think I could do that for six years. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. Perfect, man. Uh, so you got into Stanford and uh, came here, uh, came to the US and then basically what was it like, like uh, the first year at Stanford, like what all uh, was going on and like just, just few things, right? Like uh, how was, how was life at Stanford? Mm -hmm. Ah, uh, where do I start? It's a whole different experience from anything I've seen. The tech scene was very different. Like I was being taught by the professors who had written the books, which I had been reading in Roadkey. Not even the latest versions of the books, but sometimes their future publications, they would send us PDFs and ask us to take printouts and read from those. Um, people didn't really care as much about GPAs or competition. People just cared about learning and doing cool things. And that was definitely a different norm than what I'd been used to. In. Um, so obviously, personal life adjustments, converting everything to from US dollar to INR first year, it was not easy, first time cooking. I mean, yeah, it, it was eye opening. Oh. I think I. Yeah, yeah, please go ahead, go ahead. I, it was very eye opening. Um, it was the first time I really was doing things more just out of interest and learning than for GP or degree or what someone else would care about. And just being around that group of people, meeting really smart people, it has that influence. Okay. So uh, if you had to say like, what would be the like, top two, three differences between like how life was at Ivory Woodkey and at Stanford, right? Like, so I think you have sort of uh, mentioned uh, those things at Stanford, but I would like, like sort of comparison between how uh, generally an undergrad in India would look like compared to, let's say, uh, how, how things are at Stanford, right? Like, so what would you talk about? What would you say about that? Sure. I think I'll basically go back to some of the things I was saying. One, you, no one cares about your GPA or grade. Like, so if you just keep that out of the picture, you suddenly get a lot more flexibility on deciding which courses you want to do, which interest you want to pursue. You don't need to optimize for like which course is easy or like where you might be able to just get by. So that was very different. Um, that's, I don't know if that's common across 
all of you are so common yeah, in India, but yeah. which from at least my personal experience. Um, one more thing I liked about Stanford was just how close it was to the industry. Um, I think Rutki had that disadvantage being pretty f- disconnected to some extent. Like we didn't really get as much exposure to the industry outside of our internships. Mm-hmm. Stanford may like there would be tech talks from like Google employees or like recruiters from big tech companies, Apple every other week. I remember they even had like like uh, internship research projects and all would be very like something applicable to the industry. So those kind of things were very different, which was new exposure. Yeah, I think I would say those would be the top things, like doing things that you actually enjoy and then yeah, yeah. being on the cutting yeah. edge of things. Yeah. And I personally, for example, if you would ask me, right, like one more thing that I found uh, to be very different uh, is I think people around us in Stanford were far more motivated on doing what they want to do mm. rather than in undergrad. In undergrad, it was basically, it was not that cool to work hard, right? Like I'm like, uh, <laughs> but that like if you're in Stanford, like everybody around us was working super, super hard and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Perfect. So, uh, so both of us joined Facebook as an intern and then you sort of decided to not pursue Facebook and you decided to join Quora. So what was the thought process then? Like, why did you, uh, and Quora at that time, I think was pretty small, right? Like how many people were there in Quora at that time? Uh, we were about 12 people when I was interviewing. So I was the 13th employee to join. So it's including yeah. all the employees, not just engineering. Yeah. So it was a very small company. It was quite hot at that time. It was founded by pretty senior folks from Facebook. They mm-hmm. brought in some of the early employees from there as well. So. And it was getting a lot of traction among the tech founders, like the people who are using the product are mostly like the top famous folks on Silicon Valley. Um, right. Why I joined Quora, I think my primary decision came down to like, given this is my first job, I should just optimize for maximizing my learning. Um, so I tried to isolate the calm factors away and just focus on like where I thought I will learn and grow the fastest. And mm-hmm. that's what I felt working directly with some of my, these six smartest people, well, not smartest, but six of the high performing folks that from Facebook who started a company, I thought I'll get to learn and grow much faster working with them. And then right. as a new grad at a much bigger company. Mm-hmm. Right. So this is something that I honestly right like so in India if you will see right now I don't know if uh, that's the case with in the US as well. Right now everybody is just crazy about getting into uh, like, honestly in India it just means Amazon or Google but like exactly. into bank, right? So uh, and honestly I just it's so weird because nobody really understands what are the pros and cons of doing like this or this, right? So. Uh, you sort of uh, not going to Facebook, joining Quora. Would love to spend a little more time on this because personally, I feel really, honestly, I would say annoyed uh, when people just keep saying I want to do this rather than not not really knowing what they are missing out if they're not joining a startup, right? Like so, so like, would like to spend a couple of more minutes here. Like, wh- what do you think? Uh, what would you recommend uh, somebody who is just coming out of college? Let's say they have uh, two options. One is joining Amazon. And let's say some other uh, second option is to join some startup, which is, let's say, doing decently well, has uh, some traction and has good founders. Like, how would you, uh, how should they decide? Yeah, I mean, I think you already touched upon some things, right? The, it's very appealing to join Big Tuck, the package that you will get just out of college. Like, that'll be unheard of in most places. And then there'll be some societal family pressure possibly as well. But if you zoom out and you look at your career for next 30 years, like assuming you continue growing, how much you'll make in your 10th or 20th year, your first few years is not going to matter at all at that point. And so that's why the more you can compound and optimize for your growth in the first few years, it's going to pay off in your long-term career. Assuming that... I would say you should just optimize for where you think you will get the biggest and the fastest learning. Um, 
on average abstracting out all ifs and buts i would say startups would do that better especially for new grads but obviously i think you should take this still a case by case like what kind of startup what mm-hmm. are the people versus in any big tech also are you getting some specific project in a particular field or particular area where you are passionate about or just a generalist job mm-hmm. like for instance when i joined cora my first project at cora was to build the iphone app like we just had a web product there was a lot of demand for getting into ios and android and no one at the company knew ios development so one of the co-founders just asked me like why don't we learn objective c and then build the app for the next few months okay that that would not happen at any big tech company yeah, no yeah, one sure. if you go to any of the fang they're not going to tell you why don't you build an iphone app for us you'd probably start with tweaking some small feature in some hidden page on the app for the first few months right. so i really felt that kind of learning is what i joined for and i'm glad i got that Wow. So did, did you actually build like the first Cora app, iPhone app? Did you build that? Yeah, I was the engineer on it. I worked with a designer and a product manager. It was basically the three of us working together. Yeah, but like the tech part was sort of like uh, you were managing the tech part too. Uh, yeah. Okay. So okay. So when you like when you when you guys first launched it, like when you guys first launched it, how many engineers were working on it by then? It was just me on the at least wow. client side. It was just me. Okay, okay. We okay. literally had seven engineers, I think. Like out of the thirteen people when I joined, about half were engineering, and maybe we had one or two more people by the time we launched it. But we had seven to eight engineers for the entire core of product, including backend and front web product. So we could not spare more than one engineer and on iOS. How many users were there at that time? Like some range. Uh, I don't know if I can share. To be honest, I can't even remember at this point. We were definitely But, having some scaling issues because the traffic was catching up very fast. Okay, let uh, me let so, me give let me put some number. Right, like definitely more than a million users, somewhere in that range. Possibly, I honestly don't remember. I think we had a okay. series B round when I joined. This was public wow. information. I think I'm in news. Yeah. At least the yeah. TechCrunch article said we raised round at around hundred million ish. So you can okay. also just walk back from that to see like what the user base might have been like. Hmm. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> But this was definitely <laughs> early in the product. There was a lot of, yeah. even if you didn't, I don't know how much scale challenges we had, but we were iterating very fast and trying out new product ideas. Yeah. Yeah. So everyone had their hands full. In fact, even okay. af- after I built the iPhone app, we could not afford to have one engineer working full time on it, trading on it. So I spent a month or two after the launch doing some bug fixes and feature development, and then I moved on to other projects and only spent like part time fixing some bugs if they came about. Okay, okay. That's that's crazy, man. Like I mean, uh, that's I think like a perfect example of why uh, everybody who is watching this, you guys should definitely consider uh, applying to startups as well and making sure that uh, if you get a good opportunity, like. Uh, Please do not worry about one or two years. Like, and I think like startups nowadays actually pay pretty well as well. Uh, so the difference is not that large. And uh, what's what it's going to add up to your skill set and what's going to pay you over the next few years is going to be definitely worth it. Okay, perfect, perfect. So, uh, so you spent uh, four years at Cora. Uh, no, well more. I think six and a half years. Wow. Okay. Okay. I left great, right? in yeah. early 2018. Okay, six and a half years. So, like, when you left, how many people were there at Cora? I would say maybe in the low hundreds range, like hundred and fifty. Uh, and okay, so thirteen to uh, hundred fifty. Okay, and were you like, uh, how did your role change from? Being a thirtieth, thirteenth uh, employee to basically when you left, right? Like, so what was the like? What were you doing when you were? Yeah, I can give a quick summary, maybe. Um, as I mentioned here, initially when we joined, we didn't really have any concept of teams or product teams or anything. It was just engineering and design. Like, uh, co-founders would decide what are the next projects and then how to distribute engineering resources. So my first year or so was mostly objective CIO development. 
Um, then slowly I gravitated more and more towards infra. I did some product infra first, like uh, Quora homepage, newsfeed, then more backend infra, so backend of the infrastructure, newsfeed infrasystem. Um, this was around 2014. I also transitioned to management and started supporting that team, so the backend newsfeed infra. Then I did some data infrastructure, and finally I settled on machine learning infrastructure. So I was supporting the, we had a horizontal team that was building the ML platform for product needs. Okay. So okay. like an engineer on random projects based on founders' needs to uh, engineer slash lead on more backend infra projects than to manage your own backend infra projects. Okay. And then ML infra. Okay, sounds great. Sounds great. So now, like, how long you have been at Facebook? Uh, I believe two and a half years, coming into three this summer. Okay, and what is what are sort of like the main differences, like that you sort of feel compared to Quora? Like, what sort of things have changed for you uh, at Facebook, and like, what do you do currently at Facebook? So just explain this quickly. And you have an idea sure. That. Um, so I think last couple of years at Quora, I pretty much decided I like being in the ML infra space and I was enjoying the managerial role as well. So I wanted to continue that. So I moved to Facebook in a lateral move around machine learning infra for the ads backend team. And I've been doing that since. So I mostly support a group of three teams around building ads inference infrastructure for all of Facebook across any ad you see across the family of Facebook products. Um, differences between Quora and Facebook or maybe more generally, this might be coming back to like startup versus big companies. Mm -hmm. um, I think obviously one will be scale. Yeah. Um, without going to numbers, I'm sure you can yeah. make you some guesses as like, yeah. multiple orders of magnitude difference. So the kind of challenges there, both technically in terms of the systems you're designing, as well as managerial, just how cross team you have to work with to get things done. And like, so that was a very interesting learning. Um, I would say despite of being a very big company, things move really fast at Facebook and we are still growing very fast. In fact, we still are like, I think, Again, I don't know the numbers, but a percentage headcount or like year over year growth is pretty rapid still. So it's it feels like a startup environment to a lot of extent where there's just enough chaos to keep you busy and things always moving fast and breaking. At the same time, you get the big tech challenges of both technical people side and you get some more financial security, which was a little bit more important for me at this stage of life. Okay. 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 Makes sense. Makes sense. Okay, man. Uh, so sounds good. So just want to like, uh, I don't know if you would have thought about this, right? Like, but let's say if there is this uh, second year student or third year student in college in India, uh, what should they sort of optimize for, right? Like in the in the next two three years in college, what should they? So obviously, not much is happening in college. Like they're busy, uh, but like it's sort of limited to whatever is going on in classes. Like, what should they sort of focus on? So a lot of people nowadays, for example, spend a lot of time doing competitive programming. At least they try to do uh, that's something that they want. Mm. Uh, few people are spending time doing web development, Android application development, some things around that, right? So what, like, how would you sort of uh, any sort of two, three quick recommendations? Anything that they should sort of uh, optimize for? I feel like they're already doing much better than what I was doing. <laughs> if they're spending a lot of time on programming and web development outside of core curriculum. Um, I guess my main recommendation would still be, I mean, no matter which college you're in, you'll probably still have plenty of time outside of your school college requirements. So definitely do something more productive than just online games all the time or movies on LAN. I think whether you do web development or competitive programming or like Android iOS development, maybe a little bit more of function of what you're interested in. 
I would suggest to focus on getting the fundamentals right. Um, it's not going to matter whether you've learned one language or the other as much as it's going to matter like whether you've built the core skills and can you apply the same skills to a different problem in the future. Um, okay. Yeah, let's see what else. Um, I think it's a good time to just focus on your resume to some extent like i think it will come across from the fundamentals if you're doing the right things and like building projects or yeah. looking at internships or even getting a good rank in competitive programming it's gonna all add up mm -hmm. but in the end having those core skills and something in your resume will help when you need to apply for jobs okay okay sounds good sounds good and I'm sure like I don't know if you'll answer this or not but like what, what sort of what do you plan to do eventually right like so any any I don't know if you know yourself or not right so like in an ideal world what would you like to do over the next four five years maybe a little longer so what what would that look like oh uh, let's see I think for now I'm pretty happy where I am I'm learning and growing so next one two years I don't see as much changing maybe next five years or 10 years i'm honestly not sure i've been hearing a lot about the tech scene in india and how quickly it's growing so i try to stay more and more in touch there and learn what's going on to see if, if this is the right time to consider moving um, there's obviously personal factors to consider in there as well i'm still debating how long i want to stay in the big tech space versus go back to the startup world or try something on my own. Right now, I've mostly started listening to podcasts, lectures, or connect with people who've done this in the past. Mm -hmm. But it's too early for me to make a decision. Okay, okay. But I, 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 it's a non-answer answer. No, well, that's okay. That's okay. I'm, like, I, I'm sure like anybody telling me that what they want to do over the next five years, half the times that's going to be something that they want to do but like they don't really like actually feel that that's what they are going to do or they want to do or mm -hmm. and half the time it's basically uh yeah i think very few of us would have that clarity what to really but like i think like i understand the sort of direction that you're talking about right yeah perfect man thanks a lot uh really really nice talking to you i'm sure this will be really helpful for a lot of uh, students who are uh, watching this and uh, thanks a lot uh, for taking out time and talking to us sure happy to help good luck yeah, yeah thank you Bye -bye. for new programming updates and videos subscribe to coding ninjas channel